Hey, it's Donnie from Coding Overload, and welcome to the third episode of the Getting Started with Tinker series. And we are going to be focusing on animation and rotation today. Um, we're going to be starting off from where we left, episode two, which if you have not seen, I recommend seeing, just so you kind of understand what the code is doing. Um, if you remember, we ended it with this code right here. And you can see that that lets us walk around using our arrow keys. Very cool. Um, the next thing we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking a look at the animation and we're going to be taking a look at the motion and we're going to kind of talk a little about how the animation works. So the way this works is if we go ahead and do an animation, maybe right here, take a look at that, we'll notice that the character starts walking. And now the, the animation will run for a few seconds. And that could be difficult to deal with depending on your program. But the nice thing about our program is that it only moves when the arrow is pressed and we will just press the arrow, right? And that means the animation will basically just play for the time we are walking. And we can kind of see that. If we move our character down a little, we can go bump like that. And then we can kind of drag him down a little more. And you'll see that it does, hap it does stay for a little while afterwards. But it's not a major issue for us. We can work around that. Um, we'll need to play around a little with that to get it right. But it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Notice that the idle animation is kind of the one we want the most. So one option is something like this. And what that will do is that will stop our animation by adding this idle here after the wait. So that means we're going to have our 0 0.02 seconds of walking. And then it's going to idle. But... If we hold the key, then this animate code is going to trigger over and over again. And it's not the most efficient, and you will see a little bit of jerking, but it's pretty minor, and it's a decent way to handle this, handle this problem while also keeping our really fluid movement we have. The animate and wait could, could work, but we'd run into issues with doing things like diagonals. Um, that would become difficult so we're gonna stick with this um, we may drop the time down to clean it up a little we'll test that after we're done with everything else so the next thing we need to do is go ahead and add the same animate code for all four if statements so we've already done one so I just go to animate in here it's the one literally the very first option I go to walk and I'm just gonna drag it in to both of these just like this and again I dragged all four out I didn't try to do it like one at a time just because I think it makes it a little nicer and notice that our codes getting a little long so we're gonna have trouble we have to scroll a lot one option is just to zoom out and you can do that now sometimes that can be hard to see so I would just experiment and see what works best for you now if we do this we'll see that we get a pretty nice walk animation it's real clean it's real fluid and it does stop when we want it to stop. It's really not bad at all, I kinda like it, I kinda like it. Now, one thing you might notice though is, watch how he walks left. He kinda walk, he's kinda walking backwards, right? That's a little strange, and of course, one reason for that is that we just do not have our uh, rotation. We're not rotating our character at all. Let's talk about this point in direction. There are other ways to rotate, there are things like this, which will let you rotate your character, but I'm not a big fan of this just because it can be kind of, it's kind of similar to this one, but I do like the point and direction quite a bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the left. Now this is easy because if you take your sprite, set him kind of in the center, right? You're gonna notice that wherever you turn this, wherever the arrow is facing, that is where your sprite is going to face as well. And we can kind of, we can test that without too many difficulties. If you do it like, so like that, that's the kind of rotation we're getting. Like if you grab your sprite and do it like that, you'll see that's the kind of rotation we want. Now watch that. So if I double click that, it just executes the code, right? That's negative 90. So that's what we want for the left arrow, right? So let's, let's try that out. Now notice that right there, 
I ran the program right, but his rotation style did not go back, so we have that same issue again, except it's a little different. So one thing I do is in the on start, I, I, this is kind of our initialization code, right? This right here, this 90 degrees, it's going to reset us every time, and that's what we want. So look at that. Now, of course, when we reset, it looks good for the right, looks good for the left, but then the right doesn't turn back. And of course, that's because we need to take another point 90 degrees. So same block here. Notice how the arrow is pointing to the right here. See that? Now, that arrow is what tells us where we're going to go. Now, the arrow can sometimes be annoying to use. Like You see that it's kind of hard to get 90 exactly. You can always just type it in, and it'll work just fine. I tend to type, but... For this video, I'm kind of doing it more visually. Now look at that, we have that perfect rotation there. And that's really good. That's kind of what we want to see, right? And now the next thing is we can go and test out our idle code a little. So right here, let's see if maybe we can make this look a little nicer. Let's see. Because there is still a little bit where it kind of looks like it's a little slow. So let's do a 0 0.01 and let's see if that cleans it up a little. Well, no, see, then we're losing our our real good animation there. So we'll go 0 0.25, try that out. And for some of these things, I kind of like that. That's actually a good one. I like that. Um, sometimes I recommend just playing around with the numbers until you get the feel for, like, what you want your character to look like. Because that's all that matters is what you want it to look like. Because none of these numbers are really wrong. There's not an incorrect answer here, so just focus on getting the behavior and feel that you want. And I like this feel. It's a little slow, but it gives it a good, a nice feel. Now, let's take a look at the other animation options just to wrap up this video. Let's go to the run real quick. And notice how the run is on the right. So it kind of looks like he's running, right? That's quite cool. And notice how it was just so easy to change that, right? It worked very well with our code. So we have our walk, and we can just switch that to run. We can even check out the jump. Maybe we can add that to the up arrow, actually. That would be very natural. So let's do that. Let's go to the up arrow, and let's go to jump. And notice that we have our jump there, see? That's quite cool. And just to kind of show off uh, a little bit of Tinker real quick, we can go to start physics and we can actually watch him fall and then he runs and jumps, right? And look at that. We've actually already got our jump code working. And that's how easy it is in Tinker to do things like jumping. And there's a lot of other things we'd have to set up to get like a really good like platform going. Cause like one issue is stuff like you can do like an inf almost like an infinite jump, right? But there is a limit because you can only hit it so quickly and eventually what will happen is your character will, the gravity will just drag your character down. But you can do little jumps too, see that, like that? Or you can hold it and get a very long jump. And you see that kind of behavior right there. So you can make quite a cool, cool game with this where you kind of just have to jump over certain obstacles but you can't jump too high, you know. So you have to kind of play around with how long you hold the jump key down. Now. Uh, episode four, we're going to actually start working with this physics stuff a lot more. We're actually going to start setting up some enemies that we have to avoid. We're going to start setting up a few platforms that we can jump onto. And that is going to be episode four. And I hope you come back to watch it. And I thank you very much for watching this video. Have a good day.